All right. Ah, there we go. Um, I happen to have a trip to Germany for holiday, my first visit ever to Deutschland, a place I've always wanted to go. 30 years ago, I could read literature in German. Uh, now I know like 10 words. Um, but I told him I knew enough to know if he said nice things or bad things about me. So I feel good. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for all coming and braving the heat. I appreciate that. Thank God uh, to Sipgate for the cold beer and cold food to help us with the heat. Um, I'll try not to make this last too long, um, but also make it valuable. Uh, so the name of my talk is TLDR, your strategy. TLDR, too long, didn't read. We'll come back to that in a moment. Um, first, I want to give a little bit of credit here. So. Um, as, I don't know everything he said, but as Bastian said, um, I used to work for Rally Software. Rally was, it, it technically still exists, but it was a company that did project management software for companies using lean and agile methods. We, uh, we didn't care what methods you used, Scrum, Kanban, um, portfolio agility, we supported it with our software. Um, more importantly, though, we were a purpose-driven company trying to change the world of work to be more heart-centered, more effective, more rewarding. Um, and in so doing, we chose, we worked to build a great culture ourselves. Um, being here the last day and a half with Sipgate has been amazing because I feel like we have a lot of commonality. We have very similar problems and successes and awesomeness. Um, and I mention all of that because it very much fuels kind of a lot of my learnings. One of the things Rally did is we had a whole services group. Um, if our customers didn't succeed with Agile, they wouldn't want to buy our product or renew our product. So we made sure they succeeded with Agile. We built a world-class coaching organization. Um, my co-founders at my current company, so in January, our company got bought. I decided not to stay. Um, to work for the new overlords uh, and instead started a company with two of my best friends from work and a lot of the material in this talk uh, is very much theirs as well as mine. So Eric Willicke, um, who uh, if anyone knows the Scaled Agile Framework, he's a fellow contributing to build that framework. Uh, Christine Hudson, um, both of them helped, uh, the first company that bought Rally was CA Technologies and they undertook an agile transformation and these guys led it. And one thing that was amazing about that opportunity is unlike most companies where agile is, a, is an engineering initiative or a development initiative or an IT initiative, at CA uh, we had permission to change both, both uh, technology and the business. And so a lot of what we learned about how to dis, uh, uh, articulate and deploy strategy, we learned by doing it with CA Technologies, by doing it at Rally as we grew. I was employee 50 at Rally. We, we, we grew to be 500 before we got bought. I was there over 12 years. So we learned it there. And we learned it with a couple other customers who trusted us to help them change not just engineering, but the very fabric of the organization and the very leaders. So this talk comes from all of those experiences that we had together. Um, so, pop quiz. Uh, take a moment right now to think about, you could even maybe write it down if you wanted, the short version of where your organization wants to head this year. Maybe you call it a vision, maybe you call it a true north or a north star. What is your company's goal for the year? And what are the two to four strategies that your company is using to help make that goal a reality? And what I really wonder is, do any of those things exist in your company? And do you know them? And is it so short that you can remember it in the heat of a Tuesday afternoon, right, while you've had a beer or two? <laughs> um, a lot of times, this is how people think strategy works, strategy. Um, we're going to have a couple great ideas. 
We're going to go bring them into the marketplace and we're going to disrupt the industry and we're going to make money. <laughs> it's easy. No problem. But this is what really happens. <laughs> Strategy comes down from the top and it swirls around and a bunch of stuff gets added in and then we do some back and forth and point fingers and some people add some information from the bottom because we want to care about what everyone thinks. Um, and we end up with six strategic platforms, 18 supporting platforms, 10 plus vendors, 17 work streams, 50 key, key strategies, key strategies, only the important ones. Um, and it takes on a life of its own. I can tell that resonates. I can tell you've seen this movie. And so the idea goes into that, and Lord knows what comes out the other end. Right. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to let you uh, take a moment to read these words by Jeffrey Moore from his book, Escape Velocity. Not only is the strategy at your company abstract, the very concept of strategy is abstract. Um, when I read this quote, I think about an executive team I worked with at a major insurance company, uh, uh, sorry, insurance division at an American company. And I was working with the president of the business unit. And he and I argued back and forth. He insisted that the strategy must include 18, well, actually, he said 19, that's Neunzen, see? 19 major initiatives. I got him down to 18. A win. Um, when I asked his, when I talked to his team, the group of vice presidents that reported into, or senior vice presidents that reported into him, um, they described their local strategy. So the guy who was leading auto insurance had a strategy. The guy who was leading personal insurance, property insurance, had a strategy. The person who was leading partnerships had a strategy. And by the way, none of them looked like the 18 strategies, right? Um, and really what they did is they catered to their own bottom line. They were being measured. The guy who ran auto insurance was being measured on whether auto insurance made money. That was his focus. So, of course, that's what he cared about. Um, and so we had a leadership team that was not on the same page and not trying to do the same thing, right? So they're all, so how could we expect anyone underneath them to be aligned, right? And to Jeffrey's point, um, it all felt a little abstract. Oh, sorry. It all felt a little abstract when it came time to decide what to do every day. So I'd go to their portfolio planning meeting um, and the, their, their, uh, the IT directors and whatnot had no idea how to decide what to work on. And so they just worked on what they were working on yesterday. It just kept going, right? So, um, I, I, uh, I got to work with the SIPgate leadership team uh, the, yes, today. Um, and I said, you know, we're going to work on articulating strategy more clearly so that your people can remember it, so that they can align their work to strategy. And I kind of opened the door for the idea that this may or may not make, well, I think this will make us more effective. But you, could, you, could, you should challenge me on that. Um, so I'm going to make the same invitation to you. This whole talk is about the value of, of articulating strategy in a way that everyone can understand they can help people make decisions, but you should question that. I, inv I invite you to question it. Um, that said, I really do think if, if you can create intense organizational clarity about the purpose of this, like why is this our strategy? What are we trying to accomplish? Why does it matter? You're gonna set up a situation where you can decentralize decision making and trust the people on the ground, the people with the most information can, won't wait around for your decision, they can make decisions because they understand where we're trying to go. And you can trust them to make decisions. And you can work on other things like 
having a better strategy or adjusting strategy to the marketplace or building a great culture, right? Um, so that, that I think is the opportunity. So uh, I'm not gonna tell you there's one right way. I'm just gonna tell you some stories about what we've learned about things that have worked. You have to figure out what might work in your organization given your culture, right? Um, but I am gonna tell you some stories. Um, I will say though, I really do think it's important to close the gap between we defined a strategy, actually having the people, everyone in the organization understand what it is and why. It's gonna make a difference. That's my theory. So let's talk about it. So why do I think it's true? What's, what's the problem I'm trying to solve? Um, too long, didn't read, right? Anyone have, you don't have to raise your hand, you don't have to give it away, but you know, think to yourself, yeah. Does anyone have a strategy that's so long, so dense, it's in a binder, <laughs> right? It's big, it's long, 100 pages. Maybe it's a list of 18 initiatives that have 50 sub-projects. That's not a strategy, that's a list of work, right? Or maybe your strategy is too short, too simple. It's a poster on the wall. And it's a poster on the wall with nothing behind it. No one knows what went into it. No one knows what those little words mean. It's just plastered in the break room and, and I stopped seeing it a week after you put it up. I don't even notice it anymore. What, that poster, what poster? Right. No one sees them. <clears throat> so what we want is not a strategy that no one reads, but a strategy that actually helps us make decisions. So you know you don't have a strategy that has meaning if you basically look around and you say, we have a lot of unfocused execution. People are working really hard. By the way, no one's ever not working. If you don't give them something to align to, they'll work, they'll find work. There's always work. There's a customer who wants something. There's a thing that's not as good as it could be. There's an idea I had. We can build stuff all day long. I can fill my days. But you're like, gosh, we don't have any impact. Whoa, oh, I lost it. There it is. <laughs> um, there's no impact from our strategy. We spent a week on a retreat. We built a strategy. We told everybody about it, but it's not having an impact. Why? You ever do the five whys? Why is it not having an impact? Well, none of the pieces in the strategy are being finished. We, get, we start everything. We don't finish anything. Why don't we finish anything? We're constantly distracted. Why are we constantly distracted? Because we have too much work in process. Who has too much whip? in their company, no really, raise your hand. You're all gonna raise your hand. It doesn't, you're not revealing anything special. I worked for one of the coolest, most effective companies I've ever been part of. We had too much whip. But here's the thing, that's not the, that's not the answer to the five whys. It's just another symptom, right? The real root cause of why your strategy is not having an impact is because nobody's making hard decisions. So when was the last time you said no? Hey, customer wants feature X. Can we do that? Uh-huh. <laughs> right. um, the boss uh, really, really, really wants us to get that one contract. Can we get that? Uh-huh. <laughs> right. Um, we have this idea that we want to win you know, win, win in this new marketplace, but oh yeah, we also want to get that big customer to renew their contracts. So we need to build a bunch of features that they want. And somebody had this idea for a new innovation, right? So we want to build a new product, right? Um, gosh, that's an, that's an awful lot of things we want to do. Um, I guess we'll just like put a team on each one and just, and now you have 18 initiatives, right? 18 outcomes, 18 initiatives, right? Um, and, and again, this is, I don't say this to make people feel bad. It just, it seems to be what happens. I think it's human nature to say yes. I think it's human nature, like we encourage thinking outside the box, think about more stuff, let's build more things. Absolutely, we wanna diversify our options. We wanna try this and this and this, and if one fails, we still have another one. But why does it matter? Why not do that? 